Hello everyone and welcome to another video. The October 2022 Arch Linux ISO has just been released. And today, instead of installing Linux the Arch way, I'm going to instead build a live XFCE ISO from scratch for installation and recovery right after this. I've just downloaded the latest Arch ISO, and we're now ready to boot a QEMU virtual machine to begin recreating our customized ISO. You can also use actual hardware if you want. The process will be pretty much the same. Here we have the uh, standard Arch ISO uh, grub boot menu. And I'll select the first option here and fix the screen resolution. I'll try to make this uh, video as crisp as possible for you guys. And uh, so you can watch it in comfort. So I set 1080p as the resolution. Of course, that makes the text small, so I'll fix that momentarily. Let's wait for it to boot up. And there it is. Kernel 5, 1912 is what we're running today. So let's fix the uh, font size with set font ter 128n or terminus 128n size. That looks a lot better. So checking the networking, we've got a valid IP for the local private network assigned. So that's working for us. If you need Wi-Fi access, um, just uh, type IWCTL and in the this utility, IWD, just type station and then whatever your wireless LAN card is like WLAN zero and then connect and then whatever your Wi-Fi network name is. It'll ask you for your password uh, should it need it. But we're set up already, so we'll just exit out of IWD. Clear the uh, screen of the console. Let's check how much RAM we're using here. No swap, obviously, but we're just using 153 uh, bytes out of 8 gigs. So that's great. We have enough RAM. Uh, for CPUs, I've uh, for this virtual machine, I have configured eight cores for building um, the live ISO. The more cores you have, the better, especially when it uh, creates the compressed image. Okay, LSBLK shows our disk that we'll be using, VDA, 64 gigs. Uh, that should be plenty for a scratch disk. DF-H shows the cow space to be only 256 megs in size. That's not enough because uh, the Arch ISO build process uh, stores packages in this cow space or copy on write space. So let's uh, fix that by typing mount-o remount comma size equals 2g for 2 gigs and then slash run slash Arch ISO slash copy and write space. And let's check the availability. It looks like we've got two gigs free, plenty of room for all our packages. You probably can get away with less, but I found two gigs to be comfortable. All right, next let's set up our scratch space with gdisk dash uh, or slash dev slash VDA. And let's create a, a giant partition in this disk, use it all. So we'll just hit enter repeatedly for all the defaults as a Linux file system. Let's print it. So we've got one giant 64 gig partition. Let's write this partition table. And we're done with setting up the scratch space. So let's um, do an LSBLK. As you can see, we have VDA1 now available as a partition. So let's create the ext4 file system on it with mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash VDA1. And we're done. So let's create the mount point for this scratch space with mcdir slash mount slash scratch. And mount it with mount slash dev slash VDA1 on slash mount slash scratch. And that works. Okay, so let's uh, make the build directory with makedir 
dash p that's optional slash mount slash scratch slash live iso all right and we're gonna change directory into that build directory live iso and now what we can do is we can install the arch iso package with pacman sy arch iso that grabs it off the internet and it's done so now do is uh, copy dash r for recursive slash user slash share slash arch iso slash configs slash relang or for release engineering to the current directory or dot all right let's cd into relang and let's do an ls quickly and here are all the packages that we need to configure so let's uh edit the with nano the packages.x86 underscore 64 uh file which is the list of packages you want in your iso so it comes with a bunch of already configured arch iso packages and to this list we need to add some additional uh networking and uh system packages to set up uh our custom iso so i want acpi acpi d or daemon arch iso of course Avahi, Dialog, DOS file system tools, or DOS FS tools, GVFS, dash SMB for Samba or Windows file shares uh, for our file manager, INET utils, network manager, our graphical desktop environment, particularly network-manager-applet, OS Prober for you multi-boot people out there, Pipewire, Pipewire-alsa uh, because we want sound for XFCE environment, uh, Pipewire-jack, and pipewire dash pulse uh, wget and wire plumber xdg dash user dash dears xdg dash utils and uh, Finally, we also want a section for the X window system, Xorg, and our chosen XFCE environment. You can choose other environments or window managers like i3 gaps to your heart's content, but I want XFCE 4 for now. So uh, arc-gdk-theme, arc themes I tend to like, arc icon theme, Firefox for web browser, of course, Display Manager will be LightDM, goes well with XFCE. And along with LightDM, we also want LightDM-GTK-Greeter. Papyrus Icon Set, so it's Papyrus or Papyrus Icon Theme. XFCE 4, the latest release. And of course, the associated goodies, XFCE4 goodies. Xorg will need naturally. And we'll look and we can see uh, this all looks good to me. Got to be careful typing here. Bear with me, guys. <laughs> Got to proceed carefully and slowly and methodically. Okay, uh, we have to set up some links for our ISO image. So we need to install with pacman-sy uh, both network manager and also LightDM. 
so we can get those services launched when we boot our customized ISO. So we'll let uh, all the uh, dependencies get installed as well. So that's done. So now we can set up some links. So uh, ln-s, first link will be from user lib systemd system uh, network manager dot service. So we need that to auto launch. So we'll put that, link it into AI or Arch ISO root file system, Etsy systemd system multi-user.target.wants slash um, network manager dot service. Looks good. Okay, the second link we want to do is, so we'll do an ls s user lib, that's before, system d, system, and then network manager dash dispatcher dot service. We want that running as well. And we'll link it into the arch ISO root file system slash Etsy slash system D system. And then uh, DB dbus rather uh, dash org dot free desktop dot uh, nm for network manager dash <laughs> dispatcher dot service and it looks okay so I'll hit return or enter or whatever the equivalent on your keyboard is so the third link is uh, from user lib system D system network manager dash wait dash online dot service so it waits for you to be online with the uh, proper IP address etc before it launches this service and then AI root file system or FS Etsy system D system and then um, we want um, uh, network dash online dot target dot wants slash network manager dash wait dash online dot service. Okay, that's the penultimate one to do. Looks good. And then finally, the final link will be, we'll do one for the uh, display manager. So we need to link in the display manager like DM service. So we can do that by linking user lib systemd. Again, these are all soft links, obviously. System like DM dot service. We'll put that into AI root FS at C system D system and then display dash manager dot service so that when you boot the uh, custom live ISO that we're creating today, it'll boot right into the login screen. So there we go. All right. So let's edit with nano AI root FS slash Etsy slash password. And I'm going to create a live user for the live user Arch ISO uh, default login. So live user colon X colon uh, 1000 are the IDs colon 1000 colon colon 
slash home slash live user. That's where the live user user lives. Colon, I like to use Z shell. So user bin Z shell as the shell, just like with the regular Arch ISO that you download. Okay, that looks good. That's our password file for the uh, live ISO. Next, what I'd like to do is uh, generate a password hash for live ISO, or live user rather. So open SSL password dash six, and we redirect the hash output to hash.txt. This is a long one, long and complicated, right? For security. So I'm just gonna enter like live user as the password. And let's check the output with cat hash.txt. And there it is. So you definitely don't wanna to have to type this manually in the shadow file, All right? That's where this, the hash, hashed uh, password goes into uh, AI root FS Etsy shadow. So we add, add another line for the live user. Uh, colon. Then here goes your password hash that you just uh, generated. So you can read it in using control R from hash.txt. But I don't like uh, passwords on my live ISOs. It's kind of pointless for me. Uh, you may have a different opinion, so, but I'm gonna cancel here. I won't have a uh, password for the live user. So I just leave it blank or null, add another colon, and then 14871 is what Arch ISO uses as the af just after 1970 date code. That's where that belongs. And six colons here. In case you wonder what 14 871 came from, it's from a date from just after 1970, January, I think. All right. So the shadow is taken care of. Next, let's edit AI root FS slash Etsy slash group and edit the groups. So we have to create the groups file from scratch. So the first one is of course, the root group, colon x, colon zero, colon root. Next, ADM, colon x, colon four, colon. Live user, that's a member. The wheel group for sudoers, right? Colon x, colon 10, colon live user. So live user will be a member of the wheel group. Then UUCP or Unix Unix copy, that's legacy, huh? Colon X colon 14 colon live user. And live user as it has his or her own group. So live user colon X colon 1000 colon. And uh, so that looks like uh, group file has been set up. So we'll write it out. Okay. Uh, let's clear the console and uh, let's nano AI root FS slash Etsy slash G shadow or group shadow. And we'll create the group shadow file here. So first thing is a root colon exclamation asterisk colon colon root. And then for live user colon exclamation asterisk colon colon. And that looks pretty Good to me, checking my typing here. Patience is a virtue, thank you. All right, so let's clear the console. And now let's edit AI root FS at C. Sudoers, right, we've set up wheel. So for the sudoers file, it's very simple. 
for root, of course, can do uh, sudo, right? So all equals all in parentheses, space all. And we'll do the same thing for uh, percent wheel for the for the wheel group. Again, all equals all in parentheses, space all. All caps. All right, very simple sudoers file. Again, this is just a single purpose. This is to create a customized Arch install ISO. Doesn't need much more than that. All right, next, let's uh, let profile definition uh, file, um, profile def.sh know about the uh, new files in the AI root Etsy that we just created and have them set the correct permissions in hex. So the first one we created is slash Etsy slash G shadow colon, I mean colon, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, quotes, that's what I'm looking for here. Zero colon zero colon four zero zero hex. Don't forget the close quotes here in the uh, square brackets. <laughs> Do the same thing. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. Same thing for the sudoers file that we also just created. We'll give it the same permissions here in the profile definition file. Zero colon zero colon four zero zero in uh, quotes, <laughs> all in hex. That looks pretty good, or hex for hexadecimal. Base 16. So I'll write that out. So we've given ArchISO uh, the permissions we want for those files we created. All right, let's go up a directory and let's create uh, in curly braces the work uh, directory and the out directory. Again, this is all in the scratch space. Uh, 64 gig disk that we have set up for here. Now we can build the ISO with mkarch ISO, dash v for verbose, and the dash w work directory is work, and the output directory for dash o is out. And we'll use the release engineering profile because that's the one we modified. This will take a while. I Again, I assigned eight cores to make this process as quick as possible, and I edited out most of um, the build, which will take a few minutes. So using eight processors. So it pulls in the latest packages and builds the image. And there it is. And it's done. So, uh, Let's uh, change directory to, uh, to out, the output. Let's clear the screen. Let's put it up to the top of your screen. ls-hl shows a 1.1 gigabyte uh, ISO for Arch Linux. So it's much bigger than the 800 megs or so that you download from the Arch Linux site because we've got a full XFCE desktop environment and all the utilities included. So let's change this to Ar from Arch Linux to say, you can call it what you want. I'll call it Arch Live. We'll leave the date here for reference purposes. So once that's done, uh, you can get it off the virtual machine by just secure copying it to your network storage, say SCP star dot ISO, and then, you know, your NAS. So this is what I would do uh, to get the ISO off of here. And then you can use the ISO to uh, write a USB thumb drive or launch another virtual machine, which is what we're going to do next. Now, on a separate machine, let's boot up the live ISO we just created and test it. This should look familiar. It's just the uh, Arch ISO uh, grub boot, uh, boot menu for our customized ISO. 
So I'll just go ahead and hit enter here. Don't have to change the resolution. We can do that with XFCE in a moment. Let's just see what happens here. It should um, boot straight into LightDM Display Manager. Just standing by for that. And there it is. So here we have our XFCE session in LightDM. Again, you may have something else like i3 or BSPWM or KDE, Plasma, whatever. So um, we have XFCE here and no password on the live user. Very convenient. And you just hit log in. No password, it's great. So Network Manager applet is working. Your wireless uh, networks should show up here as they are scanned automatically. But we've got a wired connection, so we'll stick with that. About XFCE shows the XFCE version 4.16. That's the latest as of this video's publication date. So under applications, uh, let's fix the screen resolution here. Full XFCE, so we can do that. I'm looking for 1920 by 1080, so it'll be a 1080p video. We'll keep this configuration. Of course, that makes the font super small, impossible to read on a phone screen. So I'm going to fix the fonts here. I'm going to do slight hinting and subpixel order the RGB, red, green, blue. Custom DPI setting will be 120. Ah, that's a lot better. I hope you guys can read this. And there we go. So, um, like I just said, you've got a full applications menu here on this live ISO terminal file manager. So you launch file manager um, can come in handy for the point and click GUI types. You can browse your network. So say if you have um, window shares available or um, you know, other servers, uh, file servers uh, on your network, they should show up here. Uh, Samba is configured and available. Uh, very handy if you want to grab some scripts and so forth. Uh, dot files, you know, whatever you need. Um, so you've got all the accessories. Um, you've got also a Firefox browser, which is very handy. You, it's impossible to have in the bare Arch ISO, right? It's, it's console text only, not graphics. So in the Firefox browser, you can go to the archlinux.org main home website, you know, search for packages, you know, read the latest news. As you can see here, uh, recently, a couple months ago, we've got the Grub bootloader update uh, fiasco. Um, so you can check definitely uh, what's going on with the news in the Arch Linux world. Here you've got the wiki and the installation guide. So you can refer to this if you want to learn all about Linux and install Arch the Archway. Right? And uh, for example, say you want to uh, take a look and see what kind of uh, Console key maps are available. You can open up the terminal. Uh, let's make this a bigger font so you guys can read it, hopefully. And you can just copy and paste from the Arch Wiki. You know, copy and paste the commands. Use your lazy typist like me. So there you go. Copy paste it to the console or the, uh, the terminal rather. You can see all the uh, keyboard layouts that are available for the console, should you need it. You can also go to youtube.com if you prefer a video tutorial. You know, you've got sound and video working on your Arch ISO, so you can just, you know, type something like uh, install Arch Linux. And look at all these wonderful uh, cha YouTube channels that you can use uh, for different styles, uh, of Arch installations. So lots to choose from here, including uh, this channel. And mine is naturally today at the at the bottom here. So there it is. Um, so yeah, 
encourage you to take a look at those. You prefer a tutorial. Uh, but ArchWiki is the best, I think. Okay, so um, if that doesn't float your boat, then what you can do is you have, of course, the Arch install script and library, which is in Python. So you just do sudo arch install. So you can do a walkthrough hands hold, hands held option, just with sudo arch install. No password needed because we don't have any passwords assigned to live uh, user. And you can walk through this and have a very fast and valid Arch installation. So that also works. So you've got lots of options here. Um, uh, you know, your, your imagination is the limit on how you want to install Arch. And you can also use this again to fix a broken machine. As you can see, it really isn't all that difficult to create your very own live ISO that you can use to install Arch or even recover a broken machine. That's all I have for today, so thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe if you find this content useful. Until next time, take care and have lots of fun.